Hi and welcome back to the channel. I just tried to record all of this video and it failed so I'm going to try again and see how we go. I'm feeling a little unwell and before you ask, no I don't have the spicy cough. It's not that kind of unwell. I've got a bit of an upset tummy. So I'm going to do something a little bit different. I haven't done this for a while and I like doing it. I'm going to do a haul video of the things over the last month or so that I've picked up and that I'm going to enjoy. Some of them I've seen before, some of them I haven't. But one way or the other, I'm going to enjoy them. So first off, this is for a future video. I picked up these two so I could do a compare and contrast. They're based on a very famous novel of science fiction from the 1950s. And I'm sure very different approaches have been taken with them. First off, we've got the 1966 version of it, I think it is. Francois Truffaut's first English language film based on Ray Bradbury's novel, Fahrenheit 451, starring Oscar Werner and Julie Christie and Cyril Cusack, and also Anton Differing, come to think of it. Uh, it was a bit hard to find a copy of this on physical media because it's out of print, but I looked around and I eventually found a reseller who was selling the American version of it, which this is. And so I'm going to watch it. Um, I don't remember particularly being in love with it when I first saw it. But we all change with time. So I'm going to see how I go with that one. And whether um, I enjoy it or not. So I'm going to be doing that. But I'm also going to be comparing and contrasting it to the recent HBO version. Which uh, people tell me is not very good. It stars Michael B. Jordan and Michael Shannon. Michael Shannon's always good value, whatever he's in. But we'll see how we go with it. It runs 100 minutes, so it's not going to outstay its welcome particularly. But I picked this up cheaply, and that set me on the, the idea of comparing and contrasting the two versions and whether they compare favorably or whether they're honest translations of the original novel. Kind of looking forward to doing that as a video. Let me know whether you're going to watch it if I do, because I think that uh, this kind of thing is worth doing. And by the way, I've got a small cat just down here, so I'm going to drop the videos off to one side and put in a very loud special effect as I do. So, as I said, there are a lot of sales on at the moment, so I picked up a whole bunch of stuff cheaply. Some of it's television, some of it's not. Um, I'll go with the one I picked up secondhand because there's a new Blu-ray version of this out, which I heard is pretty good, but it was a little bit outside my price range. It wasn't an Australian edition, so I don't get to use exchange rates and sales and things like that to get it. But I looked around on eBay, did my hunting, and found a copy of it on DVD from about, it's got to be at least 10 years old. I'm fairly sure it's a UK version of it. It's a 1960s spy movie, a little bit out of the usual. It was Anthony Mann's last movie. He died during production of the film. And the star of the film, Lawrence Harvey, finished the movie. Dandy and Aspic, which is a really crazy spy thriller from the 60s. I didn't mention it, I don't think, when I did my Euro Spy video a long time ago. But this one you've got uh, Lawrence Harvey, Tom Courtney, Mia Farrow, Harry Andrews, Peter Cook, Lionel Stander, and Per Oskerson. Uh, I haven't watched this for a very long time. I kind of like the soundtrack, as I remember. But uh, even though I can't get the Blu-ray version of it yet, I want a copy of it, and I've go got this one. And if I still like it the way I liked it the first time I saw it, I may well do it for a future video of some kind. But uh, as you can see, it's still got a 50% off sticker on it from when the person bought it originally. Haven't been able to peel the sticker off successfully yet. May even leave it on. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to re-watching that one because 60s Euro Spy movies are definitely in my wheelhouse. They're comfort viewing for me. So there's that. Uh, let's see. This one's a fairly recent film and I've been told that it'll be cool to watch and people have said that I will like it. People I trust, not just any random person on the street, but somebody I actually know and who knows movies. Uh, stars Andrew Garfield and Riley Keough. It's a film by David Robert Mitchell. Under the Silver Lake. Know very, very little about it. It says on the back, Seductive and Disturbing Los Angeles Head Trip Noir according to Variety, for what that's worth. But um, I know this is on some streaming services locally, but I've got a physical copy of it. I got it cheaply, so why the hell not? 
going to give that a go and I may well even let you know what I think of it. So we'll see how we go with that. Again, that's an Australian umbrella edition of it. Uh, they're putting out some really interesting stuff. If you want old westerns, Umbrella Entertainment has tons of 1950s westerns uh, for sale. Some of them are, are good, like the uh, renowned movies with Randolph Scott that Bud Bedica did. Others, less so. But if you're into westerns at all, if you go to Umbrella Entertainment, you're going to find a ton of movies there for you to watch if you have a multi-region DVD player. This next one, I had to search a lot to find it. A reseller had it. It's a UK uh, version of the two movies on one disc on DVD. And it's from my mermaid video that I did a while back. I finally found physical copies of Miranda and Mad About Men, the two Glynis Johns uh, mermaid movies from the 1940s and 1950s. They're a lot of fun. And uh, the second one's in color, the first one isn't. And it's very hard to find physical copies of this, particularly legal ones. So um, I'm kind of happy I found that one. That's that's one of my happy hauls. The movies are comedies. They're a lot of fun. And I hope to enjoy them again. And finding physical copies gives me a little happy glow on my tummy. Next one's a one season HBO TV series. It's horror. It's about race. It's a really interesting um, series. It's based on a really good novel that you really should check out as well. The adaptation takes a bit of a steer away from the original novel, but it is fantastic. It starts in the 1920s with the Tulsa riots in 1920 and shows how hideous they were and goes through the 20th and 21st centuries in some interesting ways. And a lot of characters have really interesting arcs. It's such a great series. Stars Jonathan Majors, who is really big in the MCU. He's playing Kang the Conqueror in the MCU. Journey Smollett, Courtney B. Vance, uh, Michael K. Williams, and Jada Harris. And it is Lovecraft Country. I was going to get the Blu-ray, but the Blu-ray had sold out. And this was on special with 30% off. So I picked it up. It's a three-disc set. Uh, a lot of these things, particularly with uh, streaming services like HBO, they're not going to be around forever. HBO eventually one day is going to go bye-bye and put it in an archive somewhere. And so unless you've got the physical media, you're not going to be able to access it for enjoyment or even for research for that matter. It's going to be hard to find at some stage in the future. In the same way that Netflix got the rights to and recreated Awesome Wells' last movie, The Other Side of the Wind. And it's now on that streaming service. You can't find a physical medium copy of it anywhere unless some stage of the future, say Criterion, do it. You're not going to get a physical copy of that. And one day Netflix is going to take it off their schedule and it's going to be gone. You're not going to be able to see it. And that's a hell of a shame because it's a really great movie. So I'm kind of hoarding these when I can find them, particularly for quality things. And Lovecraft Country is really quality. By the way, at the end of the video, I'm saving some really good stuff for last, so stick around for that. What I've got is one of the ways I research movies for this channel, so I'm going to talk to you about that. But anyway, I did get a couple of uh, 4K Ultra HD movies, but in Australia, it's really hard to find kind of left field ones, ones that are a little bit quirky. In the US, there are tons of them. Uh, there are tons of companies now putting out cult movies and things like that on 4K. But in Australia, I went through literally 600 movies in a catalogue online with one of the companies that sells them here in Australia. And I found one movie that I really wanted and that I really appreciate. It's this one, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. The original version, directed by Mel Stewart, starring Gene Wilder with Roy Kinnear and a whole bunch of other people in there. Tim Brooke Taylor's in it as well. This is going to look great on 4K. I am so much looking forward to watching this one. It's uh, it's going to be comfort viewing, but I'm glad I've got it. It's uh, 4K and Blu-ray, so I've got both formats on this one. Uh, for the 4K, of course, is not region locked, so happy with that. Lots of extra features in this one. And uh, yeah, uh, when I'm in the right mood, this is going to really make my day. And I'm looking forward to it a lot. So there's that. Now I picked up a bunch of other stuff. Now this one I bought for like, it was selling for five bucks on Blu-ray. 
It's a DC animated movie, but a little bit different. And I, I'm really fa a fan of the DC animated movies. I think they're doing, in some ways, better than some of the live-action DC films. And this one's an alternate universe one called Freedom Fighters The Ray, which is set in a um, DC alternate universe where the Nazis won. And arguably they did here too, but... Uh, Looking forward to that one. Haven't seen it yet, but for a couple of bucks, it's worth picking up and giving a go. So I've got that one. Not too much to say about it, but DC animation is, is interesting stuff. While I'm on the DC and while I'm on TV, picked up season two of Batwoman, the one that doesn't have Ruby Rose in it. Haven't got into the series yet, but I think I've got season one here somewhere. One of those ones where I picked it up like three seasons for 30 bucks or something. But I'm going to give that a go and see whether it's any good. I can always get rid of it if it's not. Uh, I think you watch it. Let me know. Let me know what you think. Because it uh, be interested in seeing that one. Don't know who's in it particularly. But I'm going to give it a go. Now these last three of this batch. I picked up from various places. Two of them from Zavi. One of them I think I got from eBay. And I did a compare and contrast with what it was, cost, was going to cost me on Amazon to get it compared to what it was going to cost on eBay. This one was put out by Kina Lorba. And it's a movie I haven't seen since the 1970s. 2K Master. It's got an audio commentary by film historians Howard S. Berger and C. Courtney Joyner. It's a really rare um, Burt Reynolds movie from the late 1960s. Actually, it's from 1970. Called Skullduggery. It's about um, a bunch of people who find pre-human tribesmen in New Guinea. It's got Chips Rafferty in it, which is a little bit of an Australian representation. Let's see, William Marshall's in it as well, Alexander Knox, Susan Clark, Roger C. Carmel, Paul Hube Smith. I think I'm going to put that to the top of the list because I really want to watch that one. Don't expect it to be the most fantastic movie ever, but it's a deep cut by Kino Lorber to put this one out. And uh, Skullduggery, I remember there were really sketchy fifth generation VHS copies of it about that you could find if you looked hard enough. But um, I'm glad I got that. It's a little bit of movie history that doesn't get enough love and doesn't get enough oxygen. And I am looking forward. Then there's the two that I got from Zavi when they had a sale on. This one's from Indicator. It's a Hammer film production, so you know it's good. It's in Megascope, which sounds probably better than it is. Not a vampire movie, but a little bit of cultural imperialism and a little bit of the British Raj. It stars Guy Rolfe, Alan Cuthbertson, Andrew Cruikshank, George Pastel, Jan Holden, directed by Terence Fisher, with a script by David Z. Goodman, The Stranglers of Bombay, which I'm looking forward to, even though there's going to be a ton of brown face in it. I'm on a bit of a hammer binge at the moment with the things I'm actually watching, and so I'm looking forward to that. 80 minutes from 1959, it's in 235 to 1 aspect ratio, and that's Luna down there, who wants some attention. Ah, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing that one, though. There are probably going to be cringe moments on it for obvious reasons. What's up with you? And then one of the vulgar pleasures, it harks back to a video I did just a little bit ago. It's fun, it's bad, it's overacted by some of the villains. Hudson Hawk. Got a decent version of Hudson Hawk with some extras in it. Um, some audio commentaries by the director, Michael Lehman. And it's uh, got a whole bunch of deleted scenes as well. You're either a fan of Hudson Hawk or you're not. I'm a fan of it. So I'm going to enjoy that, even though I think that hat needs to have a brim down a bit. Never wear a hat with a straight brim. It makes you look like there's something wrong with you. Never a good look. But anyway, that brings me to the next lot. Brings me to my recent hauls from the wonderful people at Imprint. The Australian company that's putting out really high quality Blu-ray editions of obscure movies. Now, I'll put these in chronological order, I think. There we go. Now, this is over the last few months. Every month they put out about six movies. Uh, last couple of months they've been a bit thin on the kind of thing I like. I, I tend to pick and choose the movies from them that I like. But first off, an Ida Lupino-directed movie. 
one of the great early movies about a certain subject which is really great it stars Myla Powers and it is Outrage which is one of the first Hollywood movies that seriously dealt with sexual assault um, it's done by the filmmakers which was Ida Lupino's film company that she had for a short time in the 1950s with her husband Collie Young Have, getting this movie to come out on Blu-ray is a great acknowledgement of Ida Lupino as a director. She didn't get to direct as much as she should have. She did episodic TV for a long time as well. She had problems with um, alcoholism and other issues, but uh, this movie goes with other movies of the 1950s, and this is from 1950. This is from around the time when people thought Francis the Talking Mule was cool. Um, and yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. It's got uh, audio commentary by film critic Alexandra Heller Nicholas. Now, she did an essay that I really liked on another movie that I watched. I was actually Switchblade Sisters. She did a really good es essay in the booklet for Switchblade Sisters. And I mentioned that in a video. But I'm looking forward to that one because I'm a big fan of Ida Lupino's work as a director and getting a copy of it on Blu-ray in good quality rather than some very sketchy um, DVDs that came out 10, 20 years ago is great. Next one is what they call hag exploitation, where you get older actresses and put them in horror situations in the 1960s. This one's from 1964, and it's uh, stars Olivia de Havilland, James Kahn, and Jennifer Billingsley. It is Lady in a Cage, which is about a um, woman who's trapped in an elevator in her house when. The house is broken into by a bunch of ne'er-do-wells played by one of whom is played by James Kahn. Haven't seen it before. I'm looking forward to it. It says, Alone in her residence over a sweltering holiday weekend, a widow is accidentally trapped in her home elevator during a power failure. Unable to escape, her situation becomes desperate when the emergency alarm attracts a swarm of terrifying intruders. And I don't think they mean Marabunta. So, looking forward to that one as well. Uh, yeah, I got a, this one at a little bit of a discount as well, which I'm happy about. Wait for the 30% off sales and then go for imprint. That's um, pretty much what everybody I know in Australia who collects physical media does. Next one's from 1971. I know I've seen it, but I don't remember anything about it. And it's... I like titles that say what they are. Um, yeah, the, there's no ambiguity about the titles. It's just straight out. The title is what you're going to get in the movie. Let's scare Jessica to death. So, like I said, I've seen this, but I don't remember it. So I'm going to watch it. It's from 1971, and uh, yeah, this one's going to be fun. I might double feature it with something else that I've got. It makes me happy. The last one I wasn't going to get because it seemed to be cheesy, but then I saw a few reviews, and they said it was a really good version of it. And I thought, this will fit in with a future video I want to do, and I'm going to review it for a future video, I promise. Stars a distant relative of mine, Dickie Jenkins, and it is The Medusa Touch, starring Richard Burton. His original name was Richard Jenkins. He's my mother's second cousin. And it's about a guy called Morlar, played by Richard Burton, who is a, a misanthropic guy who has incredible telepathic powers to cause disasters. And the supporting cast is pretty good as well. You've got Lee Remick, who's always great. Lino Ventura. If you haven't seen Lino Ventura in an Italian crime movie, or even a French crime movie, you're missing out. Uh, let's see who else. Harry Andrews again. Alan Bedell. Jeremy Brett. Michael Horton. Gordon Jackson. Derek Jacoby. So, The Medusa Touch. Crazy movie. Very, very 1978. Um, I'm sure I saw this at the Hoyt Cinema in Sydney in George Street at the time. And uh, I'm looking forward to having this. And again, it's one of those movies that I saw in the past. Even though it is cheesy and you know, it's not going to be the best movie in the world. I like having a copy of it because I've got that history with the film. So there's that. And uh, that's the four imprint movies that I got recently. Now, I promised at the end of the video to tell you how I do research for the channel sometimes. Not always, but sometimes. And again, Luna, Luna is, has decided she's in love with the tripod. 
these are from Umbrella Entertainment, and believe me, I am not sponsored by them. They're just putting out tons of good stuff at the moment. Um, the original version, the first one of these, was a gift given to me by my good friend, um, Maros Brzezinski, who gave it to me saying, you're going to like this. It's trailer compilations of movies from the 60s, 70s, 80s. And I think it goes up into the 90s a little bit as well. And they're called Drive In Delirium. Now, here's the first one. There are a whole bunch of discs of this. 700 mil minutes of movie trailers on this. The quality varies a little bit because getting the original trailers is difficult. But this one is great. 700 mil minutes of movie trailers from the 1960s and 1970s. You're not, you know, you're gonna to have to get a commode chair to watch this because you're not gonna to want to get out of the chair. And again, somebody is playing with the tripod. So I've got, I don't have them all, but I've got this one, which is great. Um, it's also got little bits of advertising from Australian drive in movies of the time. So, you know, the concession stand stuff, how to put your speaker on the window of your car. All of that kind of gear is in here as well. So it's got that kind of nostalgia value, and it's great for that. I do have Volume 3 as well, Retro Rampage, which I think's got um, a lot of kind of transgressive movies with a lot of nudity in them. Not for everybody, but uh, the trailers are not to be watched when the kids are up, if the kids are young, if you know what I mean. So this one, we've got 720 minutes of that on Volume 3. Don't have Volume 2 or Volume 4. But then they started branching out as the Blu-ray revolution came out. And there are four here that I've got, which have tons and tons of stuff. This one's got 372 minutes on it. This one's got, so basically somewhere around 300 to 400 minutes each disc. Drive-In Delirium, 60s and 70s Savagery. Over 140 demented trailers, uncut, uncensored, and remastered in high definition. Yeah, I mean, that one is great. It's got a bit of Charles Bronson and it. it's got a bit of those Italian post apocalyptic Mad Max um, pastiches from the 1970s. Uh, yeah, it's, it's uh, just a lot of fun to go through these, and I've got three more of them. There's Drive in Delirium, The Final Conflict, which has got Arnold Schwarzenegger and Sandal Bergman in it on the front. And this one's got 181 theatrical trailers in high def. It's got some lately Marvel movies. I think it's got the Delta Force, amongst other things. And on the inside, I should point that out. On the inside, underneath the disc, it's got a list of all the movies the trailers are for. So let's see what we've got here. Lone Wolf McQuaid, The Klansman, The Killer Elite, the original version of Sam Peckinpah did. The Deep, The China Syndrome, Body Heat, Scream of Fear, The Sorcerers from 1967 with Opera's Color. Tons of goodness there. Then we've got Drive and Delirium, um, Maximum 80s Overdrive. 110 trailers on this one. 1980s action with Chuck Norris on the top which I'm not a fan of Chuck Norris's, but a lot of people like him. Couldn't act his way out of a parking ticket, but uh, all 1980s, so 110 1980s trailers for you to enjoy. So if you're a 1980s movie buff, particularly exploitation films, you're going to love that. Um, and again, the quality is great on these. And the other one I've got is Drive in Delirium, The New Batch. 175 mind-blowing trailers, uncensored and remastered in high definition. And this this one goes from the 1960s onwards. It's got Barbarella and all of those 1960s um, science fiction movies on it as well. Real lot of fun to just sit down and watch these. You know, get your big bowl of popcorn, get your beer, sit down, have a really good time just wasting time basically so that's it for this time around thank you very much for watching if you enjoyed the video let me know which one of those you want me to review i'll do full reviews on any of the movies i mentioned there 
if I get enough people saying they want to see it. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please consider liking, subscribing, and leaving a comment. Tell me which stuff there you want to watch. You can support the channel also by going to patreon.com slash paleocinema and donating there. Look after yourselves. Watch some good movies. Watch some bad movies. Watch some movies you've seen before, but take a chance on some new stuff as well. And I'll catch you next time. Thank you.